Um, ISIS double check number one, otherwise you're good. Awesome. All of us are in the Desmos. You guys have two more minutes to finish the multiple choice do now. As I watch you guys complete, I will, um, I'll give you some feedback as I see you guys complete it. So far, we're for 100% on number two. Awesome job, you guys. Everybody but Malachi, double check number one. Everybody but Malachi. Thirty more seconds to finish up. Awesome, Isis, Malachi, Niasia, Dwayne, Madison, Yamani, you guys are right on number one now. Oh, uh, Naziah and Zira, double check number two. Lauren, Nazaya, Janaya, and Erica, double check number one. 10 more seconds. And then I'll go through and tell you guys what the correct answers are. Okay, number one is A. Number one is A. Number two is C. Number two is C. And number three is A. Any questions or concerns about the do now? For which one? Huh? Uh, one second. Okay, so for number one, the reason why it is A is because that's what this, so the census um, is how we figure out how many people are living in certain areas, and then it's the census that is used to redraw those maps. And the reason why, um, so like B is not correct, because as we know, gerrymandering is a thing, or redlining, it's one of those two. Uh, C is not C because the Senate is always two senators, per state, it's always been like that. And finally, it is not D because you have to draw new district lines no matter what, unless your population stays exactly the same, which as we know is not the case. So if you guys wanna transition over to slide number three, you guys are gonna see a, um, a data table about the growth of the Latina block in uh, voting. You guys are gonna have three minutes to review this data and answer those two questions. 
Once you answer those two questions, we'll come back together to discuss. Three minutes to respond. Chat me if you have any concerns. Go ahead and get started on slide number three. Awesome urgency, Erica, Niasia, Ariana. Awesome, love the urgency on number one. I see a lot of really thorough responses happening. You guys have 90 more seconds. As a hint for number one, compare the eligible voters to the people that actually vote. I see that we need a little bit more time with number two. So I'm gonna give us one extra minute. You have one minute to finish up. Okay, I'm gonna give us another 30 seconds to respond to number two. I'm, track, uh, I'm tracking your responses in, um, in Desmos. Okay, let's go ahead and come back to um, come back together to discuss the hook. I'm going to go ahead and pause this where we're at. For number one, Madison, would you mind unmuting and sharing what you gathered from the data for number one? Um, yeah, 
I said that, hold up. I said the rate of eligible Hispanic voters is way higher than the Hispanic voter turnout, which means that many people are registered to vote, but less people actually vote. Awesome, exactly the right data that you would wanna pull out from that. And Erica, are you able to unmute and expand on your response for number two? Your response for number two is correct, but can you explain, can you add to it and just tell me like, is it surprising or what does that data tell you? I think it's very surprising because- Oh, sorry, Erica, first, can you share your response and then can you tell me if it's surprising? Yes, I said that more Latinos are supporting Donald Trump which is surprising because, of course, we would expect Biden to have um, more support for Latinos because uh, Donald Trump has made um, discriminatory statements, but it says that his percentage is up from 26. Yes, exactly. So uh, Donald Trump does have a big support of certain Latino vote voters, and that tends to be what people pull out is that it's surprising because of the some of the statements he said with regards to the wall and things like that. So today we are going to be looking at who votes in elections and why, and how are people understanding the 2016 election? And we're gonna do this in two parts. On slide four, I'll open it up in a second. You guys are going to have the opportunity <laughs> to uh, respond to who votes in elections and why with um, some data and an article to respond. Before I send you to that slide, I want to clarify something because it looks very weird. So there is a chart on the left-hand side. I'm gonna unpause your screen so you can scroll to slide number four so that way you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see on the left hand of your slide, underneath the two circle graphs, I think that's what it's called. Uh, thank you, I have six of us there. If the other 11 can transition to slide four, please. Thank you. So on the left hand side, you'll see the circle graphs. Underneath there's a chart that says highest win and then lowest win. And then there's another chart under that with more information. That's technically supposed to be one chart Desmos did not like me copying and pasting yesterday when I was trying to set this up. So that's why it looks like that. So everything that goes underneath highest one, that, that is what the voter turnout in the United States is. It's technically supposed to be one chart. If you need any other clarity on that, please chat me and I'll let you know. But so voter turnout in the United States is highest when elections are competitive and lowest when most elections are decided by a large majority. You guys are going to have seven minutes to read this article and answer the question, who votes in elections and why, while using this data. Once uh, you are done with this first uh, main inquiry, we'll come back together to discuss that question, and then we'll move on to main inquiry number two, discussing the 2016 election. You have seven minutes to get this reading done and answer that question seven minutes to complete. Chat me if you have any questions. Go ahead and get started.
four more minutes to finish annotating. There are only 16 of us in Desmos and there should be 18. If you're not having, um, if you got kicked out of Desmos and you can't log back in, please let me know. I'm going to pause this very quickly. I have the timer paused. Uh, Madison asked a good question. Uh, political efficacy means that it's a citizen's trust in their ability to change the government. So political efficacy might refers to whether or not you actively believe that your vote is going to change how things are happening. So if there's low political efficacy, that means that you're, you don't vote because you don't think it's going to make any difference, whereas high means you believe that your vote will change. Okay. You guys have, I'm going to give us a little bit more time because I see we're still working on our answer to the question. You have two and a half minutes to respond to the question. This is, this question is literally just like, who can be counted on to regularly vote? Two and a half minutes. Go ahead and keep going. Make sure you're specifically naming what kind of people, men, women, rich, poor, wealthy, poor, I just said that.
Go and take 30 more seconds to finish up your responses. And then we'll jump into discourse. Okay, five minutes of discourse and then we'll move on to the next slide. Who is most likely to vote? And why do we think that is? Who is most likely to vote? Can I hear from Yamani, then Ariana, and then Lauren? I said that older people over the age of 30, women and the wealthy are more likely to vote. Um, Ariana, are you able to jump in? Or are you having mic issues? Uh, you guys hear me? There we go. I can hear you. Okay. Um, I agree with the older part. I said wealthy and older people, well, wealthy older people um, are more likely to vote because I feel like they have more education. And then um, also in the data, where is it? it says wealthier, 70% makes up 70% of the votes. And I said while Blacks, Hispanics, and low-income people are not like as politically active, because I feel like because they're in poverty and everything, they might feel as if their votes um, like won't make a change. So I just went with wealthier, older people. I agree with Ariana and um, Yamani, and I had said, is that nice? Okay. I said it was women and people of color who are most likely to vote, and I said that only because, well, yeah, I don't know how to explain the people of color part, but 8% of women um, are more likely to vote than men is what it states, and it also states that Though in 2012, there was a greater turnout over white and Latino and Asian American voters. Awesome. So I think we've properly identified who is voting. Why is it these people? I'll take a hand. Why do we think it's these people that are more likely to vote? Um, I believe that all groups besides the wealthy had to fight for this right to vote. So it's like they do it, they do it now because they have the ability to vote. Awkward. Um, awesome. And then Kezia and then Isis, I saw your hands go up. I was just going to say that I think maybe older people um, have the chance to vote because I guess now they, they're they older, so they have more knowledge than younger people, so they would take it really serious. I agree. I was going to say the same thing. I was just going to say that they're more educated on politics and things like that, so they would be more likely to vote. Awesome. That is a pretty great summation of why these groups are probably the most invested. But now I want to transition us and to look specifically at one of these groups, the Latino population, and just the interesting things about their voting in 2016, whether or not it surprises us and uh, what we can learn from it. So I'm going to restrict us to that slide, scroll it all down. Also, I noticed that only 15 of us are on the Desmos and there should be 18. If you're one of the three that's not on there, please make sure you're there so you can get credit for participating today. And uh, let me know if you're having any tech, any tech issues and cannot get through it. Okay, you have seven minutes to read and annotate this article and answer the question, how do political scientists explain Latino voting patterns in 2016 election? And then we'll finish up the day with discourse on this question before the exit ticket. Seven minutes to read, go ahead and get started.
four and a half minutes to finish reading. Awesome, I'm starting to see res some responses to the question. You guys have two and a half minutes to respond. Why, are, why did uh, Latinos decide to support President Trump is basically what the question's asking. I see that we still need some time to continue responding. So I'm gonna add one more minute to the clock. You have two minutes to finish up. One more minute to finish those responses and then we'll come back together to discuss.
Awesome. Let's go ahead and come back together. Why did the Latino population opt to vote for Trump instead of other alternatives? Can I hear from... Naziah. Um, I had said that the political scientists explained Latino voting patterns in 2016 was based off of their values and their beliefs, but mainly their values and beliefs was based off of their religion. They had like this angelic religion they were believing in, so they were more focused in on that. And they had said that they were somewhat conservatives because of this, so that's why they were more Republican and leaning towards Awesome. Nazaya perfectly summarized why Latinos felt compelled to vote for Trump instead of Hillary, despite some of his anti-immigrant rhetoric. In the chat, I have a quote from, I believe his name is Joseph Adorno, yes. And one of the things, and this is, comes towards the end of the article, one thing he says is, I guess it's more about the Republican Party in a way when asked why he would support Trump. What does this quote tell us? He says, I guess it's more about the Republican Party. Erica, go and jump in and then ISIS. It means he cares more about upholding Republican and conservative views and making sure that's put into the country's future than necessarily the person representing those and the things that he said. I agree. They're basically saying that they're not supporting the person that's running for president. It's more so the values that the party is showing them. Awesome. I want us to push this. Is this just a Republican thing or is this just politics where you don't look at the candidate, you look at the, whether or not they have a D or an R in front of their name? Uh, Erica, go ahead. I definitely think this is politics because look at the election that just happened. Like Biden definitely is not perfect. He's definitely not without allegations and problems, but because we'd rather have a Democrat because we don't agree with Republicans and like the things that Donald Trump has said, we think that Biden is the lesser of two evils, but that's not, it may not be the case. And I usually go and build off of that. Um, personally, I do think it's politics, but I don't think Erica's example was supported because people voted for Biden because they seen what Trump did. So I think that was actually the opposite end of the spectrum, people looking at the candidate rather than politics. But I typically think that nine times out of 10, it is about the um, political party than a candidate because some parents tell their kids vote for a Republican or vote for a Democrat, not necessarily looking at the candidate and the ideals that they upheld. Awesome. And just to build off of what Nyasia and Erica are saying, there are so many people that literally said like, I don't like Hillary, but I'm going to vote for her anyways, or I don't like, like, I know so many Republicans that actively talked negatively against Trump, but they voted for him anyways, because they would rather have a Republican in the office than a Democrat. So it definitely goes vice versa. And it also depends basically, on, and this is potentially an issue with a two-party system. When you can only choose between two people, you may not always be voting for your ideals, but just which option seems the best. <laughs> okay, I am gonna turn off our pacing so you guys can transition to the last slide, which is an exit ticket. This is a mini quantitative analysis uh, exit ticket. You guys did really great on these in the mid quarter and we'll continue to build up our skills with these. So you have to describe a trend and then explain the impact of the information presented in the chart. Once you complete the exit, exit ticket and click turn in, on Google Classroom, you'll be able to go, but not before I see both things. So please wait until you hear me say your name So you before you go. You have the remainder of class to get this exit ticket done. Awesome job today. Please chat me if you have any questions or concerns.
Just as a piece of clarity on this exit ticket, you don't need to summarize the whole chart. Just find like one trend that holds true in the chart, if that makes sense. So it's just like one trend, describe one trend presented in the chart and explain why that trend might exist. So you don't need to explain all of it. You can focus specifically on either politically engaged, gender, race, age, whatever. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just checking your responses in um, Desmos and then comparing it to Classroom and then you guys are good to go. Erica and Isis, you guys are good to go. And Yamani, you're good to go. Sorry about the delay. Janaya and Ariana, you guys are good to go. Zira, you're good to go. You are.
Sorry, Anaziya, give me one second. I just need to refresh. My internet at the school has been very weird today. Naziah, you're good to go. Dwayne, you're good to go. And Lauren's done. <laughs> um, Malachi, you can log off Zoom if you want. Nyasha, you're good to go. Is Madison already gone? Yes, she's good to go. Anyways. 